got our um, ribs on the strong back. That leaves us with the transom. So here's the transom. And I wanted to show you a little bit. The transom's slightly different case because in this design it's angled. And we know that the top of the transom needs to be at that 14 foot line. Um, how did I pick that angle? Just kind of by eye. It looked reasonable. Kind of going for the uh, traditional curve on both the bow and then the angled stern that a lot of these kind of general purpose sailing rowboat type boats have. So we took the angle here and I've made a couple of wedges. I'll show you these that replicate this angle. Where do they replicate it? Right there. So uh, we, these two wedges, what we're going to do is we are going to arrange them on the outside of the transom like that so that the top or, or bottom depending on how you're looking at it will be on that same angle we want this point to be held at our 14 foot line for the boat which is right here and that's an inch and a half from the end of the strong back so what we're going to do is put vertical two by fours which will take us exactly to that inch and a half point and we will fasten those the, the transom with those wedges onto that at the right height so that we're at the position uh, the keel center the tip of the transom is at the right height below the reference line that's the plan yeah. here's a potential outline of the boat let's just take a look here from the transom on out it's a sort of a steep curve well we eyeball tells me that transom may need to come up a little bit but uh, we'll start stretching some battens and testing these lines and seeing what they look like and that starts the next phase trying to double check and imagine how these shapes will actually look in 3d what i'll do is uh i've got a couple of one buys uh, these aren't aren't great we won't be using this kind of stock on the boat you can see there's a slight wobble sometimes the grain's not super consistent so that means it won't like right through here you can see it it actually curves a little a little wiggle uh, so we'll be uh, joining together some better quality select pine for the real stringers uh, but <clears throat> they'll be good enough battens to take an eyeball at these lines, how they actually line up in 3D. So I'll show you. All right. Let's show you around how this looks to me. Um, so what I've done is marked the position that the chine will reach at the bow, which will be right about here, actually. There's our bow line, so an inch and a half off here. And then back slightly because this will be curving around uh, to the bow. So that's pretty close, close enough. And then uh, if it's not naturally, if the wood isn't naturally touching the rear reformer, put a clamp on it. But I'm really happy with this line here all the way along from both a vertical standpoint. Uh, and I think horizontal until it gets here this that doesn't look too bad um, but look at it from the side view again I'm really happy with that <clears throat> that's doing just what it seems like it ought to have to do until we cross R4 here and sure looks like to me takes a wacky dive so same way a little bit less with the keelson that's a really nice curve I'm sort of approximating how, how this would come down the stem 
Uh, if you look at the lines on the boat, I'm trying to continue that basic curve across R1 and then into almost a circular radius there uh, with a slight inclination. So that's pretty close. Maybe it could be a little further down. My tape's probably starting to drag. But I'm happy with that <clears throat> until we cross our four back there. And it looks like the rate of curve. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure. And of course another thing going on here is I don't have a computer modeling capability to find the water line on a 3D shape like this, so I'm guessing. And I want the the water line to be really pretty close to uh, the bottom of the transom so that uh, for efficiency you want sort of to come to a point as a, uh, be the least drag. I'm suspecting uh, this may be a little too much. So one of the things we can do is we can play around with this a little bit. Show you. So let's see. Really high tech rig here. But if you look now from the stern running along, you know, from the side, the horizontal perspective, you can see how even a tiny little adjustment here can make a difference. All right, we're back at the uh, building the boat project, and this is my friend JT. And JT helped me uh, build this structure here, this shop or garage or whatever it is. So let's see, uh, what we got is forward end of this guy. Grab him. Classic wooden powerboat. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I built that. <laughs> he goes, I'll just follow this along. You know, you're following the shear line now as well as the chine. And it looks like it's a really pretty good curve. And both the, sh the chine and the shear are looking really good until they cross over R4 down there. And again, it looks like it's going up a little unnatural. Probably we're going to need going to need a new transom, I think. Not the end of the world yet, because you know, lose a little wood. But I've got I've got plenty to work with of this birch half inch. Uh, the dagger board trunk will come out of this to two and a half inch eight foot strips will be joined together to make the keelson plenty of wood to make another transom so that's what I'm thinking bourbon time Looking at Home Depot for what I found before, which is Select Pine, it's really nice stuff. Really clean, really straight if you pick through the pile. And they've had one by ones before and they didn't this time. So they have these one by twos. They're eight feet. We need 16 feet lengths. So I'm gonna have to scarf joint these pieces once we rip them. <laughs> getting up the nerve to make the final decision on that. We've got a few other things to do. You saw that we cut out the uh, rippers from the birch plywood. That'll be the keelson. So we've got two eight foot strips that you saw us uh, rip out <coughs> with my buddy JT's help. Uh, 
and we're going to need to join them. So there's a concept called scarfing, which uh, I made a couple of scarfing jigs myself. They work okay. Uh, what we're going to do is cut a very shallow angle across this piece and then another shallow angle across uh, the other and get them so they lay on top of each other. And rather than a butt joint, which has no strength, a scarf joint, which I'll show you, uh, has a quite a bit more resilience. Now we're going to run the circular saw. It would be better if I had a saw with a longer blade, but uh, this is a standard seven and a quarter inch circular saw. So you can see that uh, putting that on uh, this straight edge and running it along, we will get a very narrow angle cut. blade's not as long as I would like. I'm going to have to curve that off and then continue the grade with a plane. There's the idea. I keep the weight on the forward end of the plane there to, to retain this as the guide, guiding uh, surface and angle. And we got the two pretty sides aligned, so that's good as well. So I'm happy with that. We'll be talking about what I've learned about it anyway uh, over the projects I've used it on. There's simply no way to build a boat like this where all of the materials are um, instant exposure to rot uh, other than completely making the thing watertight and so we're using epoxy for not only the glue parts but also as we'll see for uh, a layer of uh, fine fiberglass mesh in epoxy to totally seal uh, the wood of this boat. So this, uh, this is uh, West Systems 207-105. Uh, 205 is the normal uh, hardener for this uh, West Systems epoxy. 207 is special in that it's for clear. And this epoxy uh, is going to be sometimes hidden, but usually it's going to be underneath the final uh, spar urethane coat. So we want to bring out the wood grain. We don't want any milkiness, <clears throat> so that's the 207. So we don't have a whole lot of material in there. The key is to mix it really well, the two parts, and that the ratio is correct. Those are the two keys for the epoxy to go off and harden. It also has to be warm enough, and it's more than warm enough today. So we don't have a whole lot in there. That's about right. So what I've got is I'm going to use the uh, edge of the workbench as a straight edge to make sure these pieces are aligned. And obviously I do not want to fasten it down to my workbench. Not enough material. even more important than pretty is functional and in this case the most important thing would be straight because this will become as we move away from the reference line on the strong back this will become uh, the actual reference line It's probably a good idea too in case I bump this thing before it's all set up.
So I think that's it. I'm pretty happy with that.